In today's video, we're taking a look at Cognitive 3D, which measures human behavior in VR and AR simulations, and also turns them into actionable insights. When I say actionable insights, I'm not joking. Their tools help you in understanding users in ways you wouldn't with generic analytic tools. But let me show you how useful this could be by looking at a few Unity demos. So for this first demo, which I use for a VR training simulation, I like to answer a few questions. Were people fully equipped when using the simulation? Did people look around the equipment required area? Did people push buttons to see the various equipment styles? Well, let me show you how Cognitive 3D can help you in answering all of these questions. So the first thing that I want you to do is create an account by going into sign up and registering for free. Then if you already have an account, we can just click on login. So once you log in, you might be prompt to create an organization. In my case, I already have that. So it basically takes me to these two different projects. There's a demo training project and also a demo game project, which has a lot of data in here, all the sessions on the project overview, uh, performance, live operations, you can also look at scenes and, and basically what we're going to be doing today as the results of the demos that I'm about to show you. So just go ahead and play with that. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and create a new project under our organization. So this will be named based on whatever organization you create. In my case, it's LearnXR LLC. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project. And that's going to create a brand new project. Go into your project, either create a new project or use one of the existing projects that you have. So I'm going to use this VR training project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with integrating this, right? So we're going to go into the package manager. Basically, they welcome you to the SDK and then you can click on next. So this developer key is what we're going to need from the portal. So let me go into my portal here, click on generate. I'm going to be copying this into our clipboard and then we can just go ahead and minimize it. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste it there. Once you paste it, it's going to tell you here that we can, well, it won't tell you, we need to click on it to validate it. And then if everything looks good, you're going to see your organization name, which should match to what we have in the portal. Click on next. And then this is going to try to detect what you're using currently in your Unity project. I am using the Oculus integration, but I'm going to go with the manual select and then just do the default SDK integration. That's going to give us everything that we need. You can also enable Photon if you're using multiplayer to give you additional analytics. But in our case, I think I'm going to skip that. Just go ahead and click on next. All right, so it looks like this is done. So now let's go ahead and click on the quick setup. You can do advanced scene setup if you wanted to do dynamic objects as well, which I'm going to be covering today. But for now, let's do the quick one and then just go ahead and hit next. And this is really cool. It tells you here what we need to map to. That way we can send the right information to the Cognitive 3D platform. So what I'm going to do, actually go into the rig. And then in my case, this is where things are set up. I have an OVR camera rig with a tracking space. I'm going to be mapping that. The HMD is already tracked automatically. So it's already mapped to the center eye anchor, which is correct. And then the left and right controllers, in my case, are going to be the left hand anchor and now so the right hand anchor. And then once you click on set up a game objects, I'm going to show you what it's going to do. It's going to basically apply dynamic objects to everything that we just map. And then if you look at the left hand anchor, which is the one that I mapped to the left controller, you're going to see that here is already mapped to controller settings, it's controller. And the reason for this is because these dynamic objects could work with other objects in the scene, objects that I'm going to be interacting with that I want to get additional gaze data then you can also use dynamic objects for they're going to get an id basically everything that it needs to go up to the actual dashboard so what i'm going to do now is just go ahead and click on next and then we need to explore the scene geometry and the reason for that is because it's going to need the data for basically this data for the analytics to know exactly where you are in the scene and also rendering right when you go to the portal we're going to be able to see our scene which is one of the power powerful features about Cognitive 3D. So one thing though is right now I only have this scene and which is okay, right? But I wanna basically export both, also the VR, the generator scene. So you could also add the other scene in here. And if I wanted to, so I can go into my VR generator and then go ahead and add it. 
And as soon as you add it, it's going to be added in here, right? Now you're gonna see, be able to see, and I believe both of them should be all exported. So we'll try that, I haven't tried that, so we'll find out. Click on export, and then that looks good to me, so click on upload, and then okay. Now we have our scene in here, which is what we uploaded. The thing that I wasn't sure though is if I added another scene within the scene that I have, it would work with the upload and it looks like it worked. I have my other generator scene in here. I also have the one for the equipment that I'm going to be wearing. So next we're going to be capturing a bunch of different sessions by running the VR training simulation that I have here in Unity. And then we're gonna be looking at the results in the portal. If you scroll down, you're gonna see that now it shows the total session duration. So it was a total of 13 minutes and 40 seconds. The average scene session duration was a minute and three seconds. These are how many sessions I actually did with this scene. So that's a total of 13. And the last one was three minutes ago, which is what I did. And then you can see here that it has all these different items. And these are all the different sessions that are tied to this version. They also get kind of like a random generated name based on the location that I'm on. I'm gonna show you today how we can change this to use more of a, you know, of a real session name based on your, either your user or some additional metadata. But you can see here session length, the day, also some of the tags because we're doing tests. It's going to be basically flagging those. You can uncheck this and basically it's gonna show you what it's in production. The cool thing about this though, is I can also start looking at sessions, right? So what I'll do though, is we have this option in here to view scene in the scene explorer. You can see here that it shows you. So if I go in a little bit, you can see that it has an icon representing the user. So what I'm gonna do, which is really cool, is I can hit play. And as you hit play, you're gonna start seeing, you know, everything in action, right? And one of the powerful features about it is that it shows you a heat map of what the user is looking at. So in this session, I started looking, this user started looking around, then I can just move and then see where the user is going. So it looks like the user just teleported to this other area and then it's looking at the uniforms. He's looking at that specific uniform and then you're gonna see that he's going to start, or she is going to start looking and seeing where, you know, where to go. So it teleported to this area, it looked at that other area. Another thing that is cool here is I can also look at the first person, which is really cool. I can see exactly what the user is looking at. Also the controllers are getting the positions. So you can see the rotation of the controllers, also where they are. You can also see where they're pressing by looking at this, you know, legend of the controllers on the top left side. We don't have any additional metadata or information about where they're looking at specifically in that jacket, how long are they looking at it for. So there's like eye tracking data that you can also capture. And then basically you can add also events. So for instance, when I put the jacket on, I wanna know, okay, when did the user put the jacket on? I could get information about that. And then you can start tracking and getting more data about those. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add dynamic objects to all of these. And it's a pretty simple process. All you gotta do is you wanna make sure that you have a collider. If you have a box collider, then that's going to do a good job at you know, getting the dynamic object, heat map and all that. Then there's also something called cube aggregations that are little cubes that get put in at the areas that you're looking at. So if you do a box collider, it'll do a good job, but it won't really show you very detailed heat maps. So it's good to have mesh colliders. So just keep that in mind. But if you have mesh colliders, obviously that's going to, is going to affect performance. Just go ahead and test it and just make sure that you are okay with that. In my case, I'm testing. So I think it's fine to just add dynamic objects to all of these. And when you add them, you're gonna get a mesh name. You can change that mesh name if you wanted to. Also an ID.
So if you go under Cognity 3D, you're gonna see now that we have these dynamic objects and you could have done that at the beginning, but I wanted to show you that kind of like in chronological order. And it's gonna show me all the different objects in here that have dynamic objects. Basically, these are gonna be the ones that I want to upload. It has the game object and also the mesh name, the ID, whether I export it or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select them all. And it's gonna tell you here that we need to upload 31 selected meshes, which is fine. If we go under Object Explorer, we're gonna be able to see all the objects that we just uploaded. So right now we don't really have much data other than the, you know, the 3D meshes themselves and how many sessions we have. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna generate a few more sessions so that we can get some data in all the dynamic objects that we set up previously. This shows me the areas that I am looking at for this jacket. You can also, if you click on this visualization icon, it's gonna give you more information. Like you can look at heat map, which is what I'm looking at. You can also look at what they call cube aggregation, which is really cool. Just a couple of cubes in the areas that you're looking at. I can also go back in here, change it to heat map. And then these heat map settings, you can toggle it on and off. And if I wanted to change maybe the intensity, I can also change the intensity. You can also change some of these settings to give you kind of a different idea about the gaze information. So if I go back in here, maybe I'll just do something like this, about 50%, I think that looks good. But you can play with some of those settings and get additional data. I can also go here and start looking at the average gaze time for each one of these objects. 24 sessions so far. If I go to page two, you can also look at other objects. If I wanted to look at this hat, which is one that I look at quite a bit when I was running the experience, you can see, okay, I'm looking at this area because I'm putting the hat on. And then, you know, normally users are looking at that area because of the place where it's currently located. So if we go to the scene explorer, you're gonna see now that we can also get information about the dynamic objects. You're gonna see that he's going to, in this case, this is me, I'm going to teleport to that area. I'm looking at the helmet. And then at some point in here, I'm going to be grabbing the pants. So you see, I grabbed the hat. So that's where that data is coming from, which is really, really cool. And then in this case, I'm also going to grab the pants and you can see that now we get more information about it, where it's going at the point where I'm grabbing and it looks like the jacket as well in the case information. So in addition to the data that we're seeing on Cognity 3D Portal, I also want to send some custom information. I wanna know when each user is putting each one of these equipment pieces. I also wanna know when they're fully equipped. So to do that, we're gonna be creating a brand new class. It's going to require two different components the interactable Unity event wrapper, the dynamic object so that we can tie it to a dynamic object. Also the game manager in my case, which is what I'm gonna be using to get a couple of data that we're gonna be sending, the event wrapper and dynamic object references, which I am going to be setting here in the start. And then I'm gonna be basically binding to the when select. So whenever I'm grabbing an object and it's one of these dynamic objects, I'm going to be sending an event and I'm gonna say user manually equipped with and then I'm gonna be passing the game object name. I'm also passing the set dynamic object, basically calling that, and then passing the dynamic object so that it is associated with the dynamic object. And then basically you just say send. Then if the user is currently fully equipped, I'm gonna send an additional event. And that is going to say basically user is now fully equipped. I'm going to be setting how many pieces they have equipped with so far. I'm also going to be sending the user position at that point. Maybe I wanna know which was the last piece and what location they were at the time. And then also the time that it took for them to get all the equipment, which I'm gonna be getting from the time real time since startup. And then I'm gonna be basically just sending that to Cognity 3D. And now you can see that this should already work. So I selected all of these different objects, associated the analytic event wrapper, 
which is going to be using this interactable Unity event wrapper behind the scenes. And then the only thing left was to associate it with the game manager, which I have it right here. Next, we're going to be creating an analytics custom session class, which is going to allow us to send a custom session, which includes a participant ID, the full name, and additional metadata, which is going to be username and address in our case. And we're also going to need to run a couple more sessions in Unity so that we can get the new tracking information that we added with custom events as well as the session name customizations that we just made. Go into scenes and now you're gonna see that the session names are a little bit different and that's because we're sending a custom session name. So this could be, again, your user ID that you're getting either from Oculus, from Vario, from your own system. And then in my case, I'm just appending a couple of characters from the GUI that we generated. And then what I wanna show you though is some of these ones have additional metadata. So if I were to go, for instance, on this session, you can see that we have, you know, what engine we're on, the engine version, the actual name of the application, the SDK type, also the additional properties that we send with the participant. In my case, I'm mocking this up, but you get the idea. This is the address, the participant ID, the name, the username, also the arm length, which is really cool, the height. So that's really, really cool. And then additional information for the HMD and FPS. We added a custom event, so this is really powerful. You can see that I started the session here. You can see that I put my headset on at this time. It's an internal event, this 2R. And then this is the custom event that we sent, right? User manually equipped with the new headphones and it tells you here the time also the jacket, also the pants, the gloves, and then, and so on. So these are all the different individual events that we added. And then at some point in here, we're going to be fully equipped. It tells you the user position because we send that information with the custom event, also how many pieces we are equipped with, and also how long it took for us to get completely equipped. It says 46 seconds. That's everything for today, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because it's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you very much, guys.